got this little track queued up in G to play my Honer Rocket. I am going to give away this harmonica. Um, it's really simple. I got a class coming up Saturday, Mastering Breath Control. And I am going to give this away to somebody sign up for the class. That's, that's really that simple. This particular giveaway is for those that want to jump on and join that class. It's a paid class, but it's going to be really cool. It's all about breathing and just sort of getting a better understanding of how to use your breath, which maybe I can talk about a little bit today. Um, I talked about it in the last clip a little bit, um, but there's so much to, to think about. It's interesting, actually, the topic of, of breath control as it relates to the harmonica is very unique, in my opinion. Um, and let me explain a little bit about this because, uh, you know, I like, to, I like to dabble in, you know, uh, reading about and, and doing very light sort of studying about breathing techniques or um, uh, meditations that involve breathing. Like I think it's pranayama, which is something that most people have heard of or know about. And all of these different types of breathing meditation and breathing breath work are, are helpful for your breathing in general and to be just become more aware of how you're breathing. But when I thought about doing this class, I'm like, you know, we got something very specific going on in the harmonica world that it's unique. And what makes the harmonica unique, this 10 hole instrument different from other instruments is that we can breathe in and out, but we tend to use mostly the inhale breath. So all these other um, wind instruments, um, right on. Great to hear that, Phil. Um, all these other instruments focus on the out breath, but we're focused, we could blow in and out, but we're mainly, in a, as a blues player, focused on this inhale breath. And so that's one of the things I want to dive into during this class is how are you working on that? How do you break that down into exercises that you can do that will benefit you? What's the technical process of what's happening that gives somebody this control and better tone and execution that's based on breath control. So those are the types of things I'm gonna dive into. I'm pretty fired up about it. It's it's actually a very singular topic. It's such a broad, big topic because it influences so many things we do on the instrument, but at this, exactly, the flame test. What's up, Shane? But at the same time, it's a very singular thing that I wanna delve into. And, um, you know, it should be interesting. Sorry, I was just petting dogs and stuff, so now my eyes are just totally itching. Um, so at any rate, I think this class is going to be cool. I hope it's a very eye-opening experience for a lot of people that do decide to check it out. It's 20 bucks to get in. I think that's a pretty fair price for a couple hours of instruction. You can ask your own questions. And I record all of the events. They become um, recorded classes that you can purchase later. But if you sign up and can't make it, you automatically get uh, the recording and my handouts that I'll use for the day. Interesting. That I've never heard, Adam, running out of out of breath on a more so on a was that plastic versus wood? Let me read that again. Yeah, plastic comb than a wood. I've never heard that. Very interesting. Hmm. So for those that missed the flame test that Shane's talking about, that was, you know, you take an arm's length like a lighter and just blow, and that's an approximation for 
where you want to live is pretty close to where I'm living as far as like the rate of speed that the breath can go in and out. And um, all I know is that I did a session, you know, the way my brain works is I'll give you a little bit of insight into partially the teaching modality, but also really the way that my brain works in general is I get into streaks of focus and creativity and streaks where I cannot focus and I have no creativity. And so when I'm in the zone of having those moments where I feel very focused and I have a lot of thoughts happening, I get in that zone and I do those sessions where I guess people call them like a brain dump where you're just brainstorming and you're just, and I did this for about 25, 30 minutes, um, maybe like a couple of weeks back getting ready for this class. And out of that came so much information that I was even surprised as I was going back and examined when it comes to breath. In fact, I mean, I've got like um, 30 angles that sort of popped out, which are very interrelated angles to your breath. And all I had to do was sit there and just play, you know? Right on, what's up? Michael, hey, Patty, good to, good to see all of you guys. Thanks for being here. Um, don't forget, I'm giving away this rocket. This The point of this was just to let you know I've got a rocket um, going to somebody signed up for the class um, this Saturday, Mastering Breath Control. I'll put the link back in this video description later. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, without giving away a whole bunch on this class, it's just going to be very, I think it'll be very insightful. And the other part of it that's helpful is because there's a Q&A uh, that happens throughout the session, we can tie in the relevant questions of what's going on, what is your actual struggle, what's your distinct thing that's going on for you that's potentially holding you back. Big things uh, to be to checking out in your own playing is just listening to your sound. Record yourself. What does it sound like? Good question. Tony's asking, uh, hey, Tony, is this class for all levels? This class is definitely for all level players. And, you know, a lot of my classes are designed that way of sort of let's look at it from fresh eyes, like more of that beginner approach and then get deeper as the class goes on. Um, I think the big part of of doing this class for all levels is the part of why it works that way is because no, if you're a total beginner, yeah, get ready to just be in hyper learning mode. But if you're an intermediate or an advanced player, you're constantly looking for gaps in your playing. So let me give you a few for advanced players. Here's what I think. Phrasing. Just breathing and phrasing. Just start analyzing what's going on with that. Think about if you have areas where you're having really big challenges getting your timing or phrasing right. Examine the breath. Everything goes back to breath. That's what I'm learning about harmonica. The more I study it. Technique issues, there's 95% chance that breathing has some, some way influenced or has shifted for you that you're not even aware of. Um, because think about it, even tongue position, when you're playing the harmonica, we move our tongues around. It can be flat, it can be up when it's bending. Sometimes it's in partial movement mode and all that influences the breath. So there's also interrelated things going on that we're gonna take a look at, like the tongue. Um, what else for advanced players? Um, speed, often, it comes down to breathing. There's really specific stuff I wanna talk about with as it relates to that. And so it's gonna be, I hope, a very interesting class. Let me see if I missed anything that came up in the chat box. Yeah, the rocket, the holes are bigger. I like them too. Oh, you're in Peoria. Hey, David, it's David, how are you? Um, I do too. They seem to me to be very easy to adjust to. There wasn't a whole bunch of, uh, I didn't have to sit there and really readjust compared to like a special 20 or a crossover, let's say. But I've heard that some people find there's a little adjustment. I don't, I don't know. I never found that. The holes are bigger, but they get more narrow apparently as they go in. And this effect allows for the reeds to pop and respond very quickly. that you can actually really ease up with the breathing when it comes to certain harmonicas and this would be one of them um, a blues harp would not be for example a blues harp is <laughs> get ready to put some serious air into it some people want that so i think that's it fits a very specific need there um, 
I think special 20s are somewhere in between. I think a crossover is very responsive, similar to a rocket. Yeah. So, I, and again, the biggest part, like I said, the Q&A, I think, is going to be, um, I think more comes from these Q&A sessions in my classes than anything else. I try to, I try to put a lot of thought and care into planning uh, the class, right? But and then and in presenting things that people are gonna that are tangible that people can actually sink their teeth into and work on. But um, at the same time, the Q and A provides me with like ideas that I had forgotten about as 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 a learner. Maybe I'd forgotten something specific, and it sort of steers the direction of the class often, and it's it's really cool, you know, because it's just relevant. It's like what's really happening for you guys that matters. Um, so that's what I have today. That's what's happening. It's a beautiful day. I hope it's nice where you are. I'm feeling fairly energetic, which is why I wanted to pop on here. Um, here's a medium cool shuffle from the MMCD or MCCD sessions, that guy that I always link to in my videos. <laughs> person that said they were thinking about trying to rock it let me just tell you the big difference like so somebody the other day said in a forum something like the special 20 is great why would you want a rocket why they do why did they make the rocket well it's totally different in so many ways it's got rounded corners for starters and that's huge if you play with a lot of pressure and you play for like an hour and a half straight yeah <laughs> and uh it's gonna make a difference to have this right on cool yeah the rock i'm telling you so the the rounded corners is is a part of it i didn't mention totally open on the sides and back not like a special 20 so it's much brighter and it has a little more a little more pop to it a little more response and it feels totally different so therefore it's a different Harmonica, in my in my opinion, look, all of the German models have pretty much um, the same guts, the reeds. They're set up differently and tuned sometimes differently, but they've got brass reeds. Right? And like, let me just call them out. The Special 20, the Marine Band, the Crossover, uh, the Marine, Marine Band Deluxe, and even the Golden Melody, while that is tuned very different, the, the guts are the inside. So what makes a harmonica different often is the components on the outside, the you know, the type of material, the size of the holes, is it rounded or not? Is it open on the sides? That's a lot of what's happening. And if you don't think that influences the sound of a harmonica, keep playing. Because I guarantee you, you will start to hear and feel the differences. More importantly, as a player, you feel these differences and that influences the way that you play. So I hope you guys make it a great day. I'm going to jump and get to work on the class some more. Maybe I will see you guys this coming Saturday in class or on Monday. So Adam's saying the Rocket used the same replay as the Special 20. <laughs> Join the class, Phil. You might win. Um, yeah, the, repl the actual plates themselves. Now, the setup and the profiling and the way they treat the reads might be slightly different. I don't know. But the fact that the comb gets smaller as it moves in 
that is influencing the way the reed moves. Uh, and again, all this external stuff changes the sound and feel. But yeah, the tuning and it, they're, they're pretty much the same guts. Again, I don't know all about the setup on the reeds. I don't know enough about you know, how they're changing that. I know a lot about these harmonicas, um, working with Honer closely, like I've been doing for years now, helping them talk about these harmonicas, but I don't have a sense for you know, the exact treatment like the reeds get from one to the other. Their, their main job, as far as I understand it, is tuning the harmonicas and setting the gapping so that it's an appropriate setting to play harmonics. It's not too close, it's not too lifted, that the distance between the reed and the, and the um, reed slot. Yeah, I'm telling you, the rockets are so comfortable, and somebody mentioned earlier the rocket low. That has been um, a wonderful harmonica that I keep going back to. I just, for the price point, I feel like the rocket low is, is an incredible harmonica. It is limited to only five keys, I want to say, but still, I mean, you get C, D, E, E flat, and F out of a rocket low. Uh, that's what's available. That covers a decent amount. That covers the ones that I'm most interested in playing, to be honest. Because as it goes to the B flat and the A and the G and the double O F, they're really fun and have very uh, limited special circumstantial use. Uh, but then the other keys, you can go bananas and they're great for cross harp first position. They're very approachable with the bending. And that's the difference between when you jump to like a low A, you better be pretty disciplined working on your, your bending because it, it's a task. Right on. Thank you, Samuel. That's very kind of you to say. Um, all right, guys, I, I guess I'm off to go work on this. Uh, if you have any questions about this event or you didn't catch something or you're confused at all, you can send me an email at info at harmonica123 and I'll help you out. Right on, Phil. There you go. Look, somebody's going to win and your chances right now are pretty good. Hey, Joshua, welcome. I'm almost done. Um, but yeah, I uh, forgot what I was just saying. Reading all the comments has distracted me a little bit. Uh, if you have questions, info at harmonica123.com. Keep in mind this class can be attended from a cell phone, a tablet, or a computer. But those that want to join this online class from a phone or a tablet you will want to download the Zoom meeting, Zoom cloud meeting app. That's what it's called. And then that way, when you click the link that I send out to you, boom, it opens up. Right on. G Harp Monday. Hey, send me G Harp Monday. Send me a reminder. Like, shoot me an email at info at harmonica123.com, and I will totally do that. Send me your actual channel link. To my email that's the best way to get in front of me you guys um not necessarily facebook or here uh just to be clear there, there are some main differences it's a rounded corner versus square uh, i don't know that it's any thicker it's not any taller than a special 20 guys just to be really clear here before i go it's not any taller if you really look at the combs it's really not, but the holes are slightly wider. And the, t the tines, which are the spaces between the holes on a special 20 are totally flush, flat. <laughs> it is hard to play with a mask on. Um, the tines are very flush and flat on a special 20 and they have a little bit of, um, what's the word? Maybe a little thinner and which makes it bigger. The tines are thinner on the rocket compared to a special 20. I know the lighting's not great to show this, but yeah, all you need to know is that it is it is similar in that it has a plastic comb. That's about the, where the sim similarities begin. And the, obviously the reeds themselves, but like everything else has influenced it. I wish I had a, a C special 20 in front of me or else I would show you guys real quick that they sound very different. Uh, you know, the draw and bend for more clarity. Brighter, maybe not clear, but a little brighter. Yeah, same plate for sure. Glad you're confirming what I'm saying. 
Okay, Special 20s have 6.4 and Rocket 5.9 millimeter. What are we talking about here? Are we talking about the, um, the, the reed plates themselves? That's probably, I'm bad at specs. You know, I love gear and I love all this stuff, you know, the instruments and mics, and but I'm terrible with names and remembering specs and things like that a lot of the time. Um, so, yeah. If I didn't say so, the harmonica that's given, being given away is going to be a key of C. Calm, okay, the calm. So it's very similar then. But if you stir it like just the thickness in general, they look they look almost identical, back to back. So. Yeah, you guys hear how airtight this is, right? So when you're bending on a rocket. There's no air loss. That's one thing they have really buttoned up on recent harmonicas. They're just coming out so airtight. Well, when it's amplified, the distortion comes from technique in the amp, but the, the instrument still, you know, speaks for itself. Once you amplify something, you get less characteristic of the inherent characteristic of the harmonica because you're adding variables. But if you play acoustically, you can appreciate and hear these differences more. Here's one in the key of D. It's a little darker, a little warmer, a little more mid-range, perhaps. All right, you guys, make it a good day. I gotta jump. I hope to see some of you Saturday, and if not, I'll catch you Monday, most likely.